Thank you for joining us for our men's studies. The study we've been doing for the last few weeks is based upon a book called The Man God Uses uh, by Henry and Tom Blackaby. And uh, basically it just tries to challenge us to remember why we should be doing what we're doing as men and how to be strong in the faith and act the way that Jesus would want us to act. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. And hopefully you'll be getting something out of it, and God's Word will be talking to you wherever you are. We are once again recording. So, let's talk about... Uh, you guys make me smile. Uh, the Bible. But no, uh, one of the things that we do commonly now that uh, comes from New, New Testament and only a, a couple of specific writers, but because they make up so much of the New Testament, it's something that is commonly done. So let's uh, let's go over to uh, Luke chapter 10, and we'll start reading. Uh, and we'll get Rick to read. Let's go ahead and just read straight at 10. We'll go around the room a little bit. So, verse 1? Yep, verse 1. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal the sick who are there, and tell them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into the, its streets and say, Even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Okay. <laughs> does, this, does this sound like our idea of missionary work and reaching out to people? Don't even greet people along the road? Somebody offers you food, just take it and eat it. I mean, we really don't listen to this whole group of statements. Or we don't even... It's not that we have to do exactly this. I mean, God gives us freedom to figure out what are the best practices. But yeah. there's some best practices in this that are very simplified. Uh, Chip Ingram does a whole uh, sermon series on let your yes be yes and your no, no. Yeah. Decide what you're going to do and do it. Decide how you're going to do something and do it. So the whole, no, 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 I don't want any food. Really? You don't want any food? Okay, we'll put it away. There's an issue there. You start this humbleness and this falsity. And so, somebody offers you food. Thank you. You eat the food. There's, there's some basic practices there that are hard for people to get that let's simplify the ministry as much as possible so we get more time doing what we're supposed to do. You go into a town that stinks and doesn't like you? Leave. Yeah, be my luck that I go somewhere where they eat crickets and <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Here's my question like, on something like that. Like, what's the difference between, okay, obeying Scripture and, you know, not being like, like, Dave Rams is over-saved or over humble or like the Bible says over-righteous versus, you know, don't invite someone to your house, don't eat with these people, don't hang out with them. Is it just, one is in relation to how we handle missionary work and the other is like how we handle false teachers? Well, there's, there's an awful lot of, of discerning who he's talking to in every single one of these. When it talks about don't eat with somebody, it's, it's don't eat with somebody who says they're a Christian and who's doing good that you know is doing bad because then you're being tied in with them because they're doing bad on purpose. That's a whole different group of people. Because they're doing bad in Christ's name. Yes, and you don't want to be associated with them. But going in, in eating with the sick, Jesus specifically told us to eat with the sick. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to spend time with the sick. And uh, a Christian, uh, let's, let's get this right, a Christian who's doing bad on purpose is not sick. He's rebellious. Yeah, he's sure. against God. He's, he's not doing what he's supposed to do on purpose. We, we had a whole lesson about that. Uh, go ahead. Jesus, like, 
regularly ate with Pharisees, who was the, the one group of people that he had the most to say about. Yeah. You know, he, if he was invited to their parties, he went to their parties. <laughs> and, they, and they wanted him to teach, and he taught. And, while the thing and, then, he, and then he read their minds and told them that they're <laughs> whitewashed tombs. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to do that. <laughs> the difference there is that the Pharisees at least believed what they were doing was right. You know, it's what I'm saying is it's not like they're like, well, I mean, obviously if they knew Jesus was who he says he was, you know, and them being who they are, they would have been on their knees like in an instant. But they didn't believe he was, you know, so... I think that's partially correct. I mean, Jesus wouldn't like point his finger at people and call them hypocrites if they believed in their heart that they were pure. He he wouldn't he wouldn't do that. He confronted them when they were not pure. Like Nicodemus like being fake for the sake of piety. He didn't he didn't actually attack Nicodemus when he was talking to Nicodemus. He just told Nicodemus, Don't worry about it. You're not gonna get it until you get it. So just go away and study some more. He didn't say, you're an idiot, you shouldn't. He, he politely told him off with, you're asking questions that you're not going to get because you obviously really don't seek the truth here. So go seek the truth. Now, the people that were like, you're the son of a, 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 a slut, yeah. Uh, he said, verily I say unto thee, <laughs> thou art a moron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He came back to them and just you know shut them down. But, but he did it with, directness, not with man be pan be let's let's go around the outside of this. And at the same time he was polite to people who were trying to be polite to him, not false in their hearts. When they were false in their hearts and they were trying to be snakes, he treated them like they were false in their hearts and they were like snakes. <laughs> so enjoyable. My we can do that. As Christians, we're allowed to do that. <laughs> my favorite part of this is is basically, you know, at the end, you like dust off your feet and then you're like You'll be sorry. <laughs> That's right. You'll be sorry when you... <laughs> like, there's guys at work, like, I've had to learn, like, you know, um, you can be all about God all you want, but until you're all about Jesus, your life isn't really going to change all that much. Um, and so, like, uh, like, there's guys at work, you know, that, like, they like to pick on me and like to treat me, you know, see what they can get out of me kind of thing. And, like, I've had to learn the Bible where it says, like, hey, if they don't want to hear, like, what you have to say about the Bible and stuff, or if they have no... Have no uh, the word I'm looking for. Desire for a relationship with Christ. Like, I don't have to tell them anything about my faith. Like, if, if, if I've tried to explain to them when they've rejected and made fun of me, I can just leave it alone. Yeah. It's great. Throw your pearls with worse line. Right. Yep. They don't, if they're not going to get it, then it's, it's not really worth your time to try and yeah. it's not within your power well, to make them. You know, it says in Psalm 1, you know, don't, when they entice you and, and people that mock you, like, don't have anything to do with them. So a 13 through 16 are basically woe to the people that are stupid and bad. You'll be sorry, people. So let's go to 17. Uh, Corey, read there at 17. Okay. Um, I'm reading from the NASB, by the way, so I know a little different. Um, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to, your name, or to us in your name. And he said to them, I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given authority to, to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. 17 through 20. How far do you want to go? Keep going. Okay. Um, at that very time, he rejoiced greatly, and the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, and you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, um, for th for this way was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son will, wills to reveal to him. Keep going. Sorry. I'll tell you where to stop. I got to get breath now. <laughs> um, turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you are. Um, you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings wished to see the things you see, and did see none of them, or did, did, did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear and did not hear them. And a lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, Teacher, sh what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to them, 
What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Okay. So here's, there's lots of, lots of different things in there we could go way down the path of. But one of the best ones is people forget about the Tower of Babel story, just how amazing it is that God just went click. Nobody can talk to each other anymore. It, it was not... If all of us stopped being able to speak English right now, we would still be able to go, Abu, Abu, and somebody would go, Oh, that's an Abu. Okay, we figured that out. No. He broke it so that that couldn't happen anymore. There was no communication. People could not work together and figure out each other's language anymore. It's the same thing with what he's talking about here. God said... I'm not going to let people get it until I let people get it. Right. And people don't like the concept that we we work up here, and if somebody flips a switch, I'm not letting you get it anymore. Now, because I don't even remember where in the Bible the Bible story is. I don't. I don't I'm not going to go there now. I'm just curious. Okay, but then now, so did he do that so that he's like so that. So that basically people couldn't communicate and cooperate in order to to Mock do that. Him. Well, I was going to say to build another tower. Um, well, well, actually, what a lot of people don't know about the, the historical background of that part of the Bible was the the religion they were actually into at the time was the ancient zodiac religion is what they were doing, um, and uh, they were at, they were trying to build a tower tall enough to get to heaven because they thought they could. Get on God's oh, I knew that part. But the Bible says that he did that to humble them. Because they had become, he, he created man to be great and be able to do whatever they wanted to do uh -huh. as long as they had a relationship with him. Uh -huh. And they had become so enamored with themselves that they forgot about God. Mm -hmm. And there was no reason to think about God. But it, it, it's like the, the concept that people say, well, I can create life out of nothing and blah, blah, blah. And, and well, sure, do that. And then the joke, I love the joke, it's like, go ahead and do it. And the guy gets some vials and he says, whoa, 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 use your own stuff. Because God made everything. And you being able to create life, you have to create the dirt to create the life. And the point of the Tower of Babel is, I can do anything because I'm man. And God said, you don't, you don't even remember that I'm giving you the health and the muscles that strengthen themselves after they tear and yep. really you you can build a tower tall enough to get to me. Well let's the switch and see how you do it now. Yeah. And it was to remind them to turn back to God. Why is this happening? To make them question the fact that they could do absolutely anything. And to imagine the city of New York suddenly no one speaks the same language. Actually that isn't but that it, isn't that actually the city of New York? <laughs> no. It's pretty close. <laughs> No, no one speaks the same language. A million people all speaking something different and cannot communicate in any way. The, the anarchy of that, we just don't even fathom the anarchy of that. Uh, I actually show a video, uh, look it up, I think I've brought it up before, called the McGurk Effect. And it, it shows you that our brains are creative stores, not fact-based stores. We, we put stuff in our brain and our brain then goes, is this what that means? And it changes things, and we don't realize it. And the McGurk effect is just a guy saying, bah. That's all it is. is he says, bah, 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 over and over and over. And as he says, bah, over and over and over, they change the video. The so, his, go, bah, the so his face changes to fa. So his face is saying fa, but they don't change the audio. But your brain says, nope, he's saying fa. Even if you know that he's saying bah, you can't make your brain do something different. Your brain just says, I've learned that that face means he's saying fa. I'm not going to let you hear ba. I'm going to change it as it goes in your ears. And it's great because people who watch it, they're like, oh, no, I can totally cheat. And you just see that they think that they control their brain. But the reality is, is you really don't. And if you look away from the screen, suddenly it's ba, 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 and then you look back, it's fa, 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 ba, ba, fa, fa, and you just, you don't realize that your brain does all of these things for you, and think about, if God just changes one little bitty thing, you don't even know that you don't know that it's changed.
cool. And then he gives us the ability to understand and the Holy Spirit come upon us to help us understand. We don't even understand what that means. He's describing it here, and we really don't understand what that means because we think, what's in my brain? What's in my brain? That's what's good. I know what I know. You really don't know what you know. You think you do, but your brain does some creative processes to make you think things. The other example that we use is uh, uh, intersection for car wrecks. And it's, uh, uh, it's about eyewitness testimony and how eyewitness testimony is, is coerced by simple statements that are made. And they show pictures and video of two cars coming together. And then they ask afterwards, so when the two cars collided, what did you see? How fast were they going? And when you say collided, it's in the 30 mile an hour range that they collided. When you say when the two cars smashed together, it's in the 40 mile an hour range that they collided, and there's broken glass in the description of what's left behind. Simply by saying smashed together. People give false testimony. You look at the pictures and you look at the video, there's no broken glass anywhere. But people remember broken glass. That's how creative our brains are. We don't remember facts. We think we do, but we don't. So it's a very interesting, that's part of this. If we know what we know what we know, and we don't actually know it, we can get into a lot of arguments and a lot of statements and a lot of fallacies and I'm right and you're wrong. That argument you've had here with your wife about who said what, you're probably wrong about half the time. <laughs> and she's probably wrong that other half of the time. But we don't even realize that because we're so stuck in the, nope, I remember. Really? Do you really? You think you do. And with these guys, the people that Jesus is talking about, God had flipped a switch and said, they're not going to get it until the Holy Spirit comes to them. I'm not going to let them get it. That's tough for some people to think about because then is God evil because you wouldn't let them understand? No, there's a right time. God can do whatever he wants to do because he's the only one righteous. And his plan has moments. He picks the moments that people do things on purpose, so things time out. we got to trust him in that. He's sovereign. His providence is big. All right. Anybody input in that? You guys ever studied any of that stuff? It's part of my college and career club. Yeah, it's just neat. Uh, they found that in 300 cases where eyewitness testimony was the only testimony given, that DNA shows that it's, it's in the 60 to 80 range. We're wrong. Mm -hmm. Because the eyewitnesses remembered what they remembered. I'm 100% sure. People went to jail for years. So uh, let's jump back. Uh, okay, so let's look at 18. Go ahead. Point out sure. Thing. Um, that, that I think a lot of people miss. Uh, he sent 72 people out into the world, and they came back talking about how, uh, in his name, they were able to cast out demons and heal the sick. Yeah. Um, it wasn't only Jesus who did those things. Yep. He gave the power of the apostles. The, the, when the 70 got sent out, or the 12 or whatever, like he gave them his power to do that. Yes. That's what he's saying. That's what I said. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but but he, he gave that the full measure of the Holy Spirit to everyone. So pretty much everybody that's saved has that full measure. It doesn't say the full measure except for healing the sick and casting out demons. It's yeah, you, you don't have that stuff. You yeah. can have some other stuff. You need to level up for <laughs> lesser stuff. You're only plain Saiyan. When you reach Super Saiyan, you can have that. Right. The Holy Spirit walking on water. It, it really... I'm sorry, did you, just, did you just compare Jesus to Goku? <laughs> yes. Jesus is... Way cooler than Goku. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Better hair too. <laughs> Better hair too. When you when you think about Anthony, when, when was the last time you tried to walk on the water? Um, when was the last time I was at the pool? Yeah, <laughs> I, I have tried to do it. I've done the whole. I'm supposed to be able to do this. This is how much my faith is supposed to be allow me to do this. I have to glorify God in it and worship Him and show Him in it. Not about me just walking on the water. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really cooler. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, no. <laughs> 
I do it all the time. All the time. I just, I, I, I just have to insist that it's frozen. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's kind of like those guys. Those guys you see on the internet, like they want to, you know, like uh, those teachers that want to, like, you know, claim they have certain like abilities. The Bible, they claim the Bible says they have, you know, and they get on that like. YouTube and try to like show themselves like you know killing this snake and they got the camera right here and the guy's got the snake on his arm and the snake bites him and he's gotta go get poison removed out of his arm because he's a pompous person that tried to lift himself up. It's good times. Like, we should be we should be able to do everything that Jesus did with the will of God. We're supposed to be able to do all that. We can. I'm not saying we're supposed to. We can. We just really stink <laughs> in our faith and following God's will. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> the, the most faithful Christians that I've met in my life don't really measure up to any of the early yeah. apostolic Christians. You know, if, if, if any of us were able to reach this level of faith, then I thoroughly and, have, and, and absolutely believe that we have the ability to carry out the, the all of these Oh, yeah. Um, oh, hey, that reminds me of something I said last week. Um, I'm, uh, for the sake of the recording, um, I made a blanket statement about people being fools who don't believe that, that, that something about the apostles don't think. I, I feel really bad about that, and I, I want to redact that statement. Okay. That's, a, that, that's like, you know, immediately after I left the room, I was like, I shouldn't have said that. You know, yeah. The, 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 the people have been taught things that aren't necessarily true. Uh, people garner, That's true. you know, pull things out of here that, that, that are sort of skewed because they don't read the whole thing. That's not a thing that I want uh, to to have attached to me. I, I apologize for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate that. That was Kurt Turner. Questions and comments can be addressed to me. I didn't understand you guys. For the record, I've had to learn there's going to be people I disagree with. But I'm one of those people that I don't like believe in the continuation of charismatic gifts. Well, I, I hold I hold fast to the fact that that whatever I, I, I call people fools about, if they believe that they are in fact wrong, <laughs> but they're not fools for believing it. Um, yeah. it, it it's, it's not it's not biblically correct. There's no biblical foundation for the things that that that, that, that they may believe. It's but but I made a blanket statement about all people who believe these things are uh, maybe misguided. In Judgment sure. About it, so um, and, 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 and my take on it is, you know, I used to have the same opinion. Of like, you know, anybody who has charismatic opinions, I want nothing to do with them. Oh, and, and the bottom line is, I mean, there's always going to be things that pe we as people are going to disagree on. And as long as we can't agree on the things that are foundational, you know, and, and like, you know, you'll probably hear key the main thing is the thing. You know, cool. Like, I'm not going to worry about it. What, what, I know, would, what constitutes a charismatic opinion? Like, I mean, healing. Healing, Driving out demons. Oh, healing, like yeah, uh, everything we were just talking about. And stuff like that. Speaking in tongues. Yeah, okay. I don't, uh, the the gifts of the spirit. I think there's like seven uh, main ones or something. And they, 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 it's Romans 12, and then there's the First Corinthians. The and and I would I I absolutely what you're saying, uh, Corey. And at the same time, I would study a little bit deeper and say, what would the full measure of the Holy Spirit mean then? If you don't, if you have the full measure of the Holy Spirit, except for mm -hmm. all those things that charismatically come from the Holy Spirit is there like a list that you go okay so this is one thing that is a thing on the charismatic list that doesn't come through and this is something that does and this is something that doesn't just to make your choice on that because did God suddenly go you know what full measure of the Holy Spirit I only mean these things when I say that well, no, and we not get informed about it well, I know I've studied extensively in my, in my it didn't put a ceiling on um, and my thing is, is like, means. you know, I believe that firmly since we're under the, the grace covenant and that all the apostles have died and that the, the scripture has been completed and all that, uh -huh. um, that, that we're firmly under the gifts of grace. And, and for me to find my, my spiritual gift within that, within the gifts of grace, I'm totally cool with it. Sure. You know, and I'm, I'm cool with you so, doing that, too. And I just wanted to say if yeah. if what you're saying to me means that if Anthony suddenly started dying right now and I prayed to God and God says I give you the ability to heal Anthony that that's never going to happen because it's now after a certain time period no what, I, what I'm saying is like yes God can still do miracles and answer prayers but he no longer gives like people apostolic gifts to do miracles through that prayer
person. And where do you get that from? Yeah, where's that in the Bible? Just because, like, when it talks about, you know, like, the tongues will cease and the vision the prophecies will go away and all that, like, and, and, I, and here's my thing. Like, I've dealt with, with charismatic pe- people that have those opinions, I mean, that are heavily involved in that, and, and no offense to anybody, but they're some of the fakest people that I've ever met in my life. I, there's a lot of fake people that have nothing to do yeah. with the charismatic movement. No, nope. 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 I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and 90% of them are not charismatic in any way. <laughs> no, and, and like I said, I didn't mean to start a debate. I'm just, you know, you brought that up, so I kind of tacked onto it like a retard. Yeah, no. I, I, I just want to make sure that when when you understand that your faith and where you're at doesn't doesn't bother me at all, I just want to make sure that you actually question and discern where the answer is comes from for you and make sure that people on the recording understand that when you study, study and find where you get things from. Kurt's pointing out that he doesn't find places and I don't really find places that say it stopped at a certain time. So if it doesn't say it stopped at a certain time, then it's not stopped for me. And my God makes donkeys talk. When he says full measure of Holy Spirit, everyone gets it from now on. I have a hard time saying, well, he meant that except for with these things. Yeah, I, I get a lot of I, I get a lot of people who just don't believe that that stuff happens, so therefore they believe that it stopped back then because the Bible says it happened, so I guess I have to acquiesce to that. I hate that that happened at some point, but I don't I don't believe it happens now, and I see people acting like, like that, and I think that they're wackadoos, and uh, so therefore uh, it, it ended at some point. And I, uh, you know, that's just not that's not in here. I mean, I mean like it's, it's not. In here. Well, what, what I'm getting at is, and this is just my personal experience, is because I've actually joined the masters before. And they're, they're like these are the same people that wanted to tell me, hey, let's get your show around, but let's get up on the stage and cuss in our sermons and, and act like the world, and just like, I wanted nothing to do with it. And so for me, like, and, but this is for me, it's like, okay, here's how I figure that out. Let's agree, disagree on some things, and like I said keep the main thing, plain things, and that's it. Never fault God for the failures of men. <laughs> yeah. When when men fail you, and churches fail you, and people fail you, yeah. remember that's men and churches and people. Right. It's not God. There's bakery in every church in right. this. I, I just want to I just want to well, come the, back to the whole the whole point I'm making is that like okay, my you guys, my brothers, my friends might have different opinions than me. They're, if they're not essential, then I'm not gonna fight with you. Because I used to be one of those people that all I wanted to do was fight, and that crap is annoying. Yeah, and and I, I agree with that. And what does the full measure of the Holy Spirit mean then? Because that is an essential. I'm talking essential to salvation and Christian growth. Great, I mean, Great. So, awesome. All these things. Study that. Yeah. I have. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's so. What I'm talking about. I, I, I want to make sure people on the recording understand what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like, that, that's the sounder when someone does something dumb. And then, All right. Yeah. So, uh, if we go back to and he, uh, 18, Luke 10, 18. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall, be, shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirit are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. All right. So let's jump back to the Job. Oh. We haven't been here in a while. Sorry to cut you guys short. i got to find a place to sit. Sure. Go ahead. I never have a place to sit if I leave at 1030. Sure. Thanks, guys. Hello. I'll definitely be back. I love you guys. Later, man. All right. See you, Corey. All right. So we're back in Job. So why did we go to Job? Well, we went from, from what we were talking about to say in the New Testament, the, some of the greatest teachers, the teachers that people pay attention to the most, talk about Satan a lot. Okay? Paul and John are the two guys that talk about Satan the most. If we do a study and kind of look at other people talking about Satan, they mention Satan. Jesus mentions Satan, but every time it is to say, Satan's nothing, right? 
And it's not the old adage from like the Amish of do not mention the name of Satan because he will be invoked or, you know, that kind of thing. It's more so of why am I giving Satan any credit for anything that happens? Everything that happens to me that Satan does is allowed by God. So God is who should have credit for why it's coming to you. God is the person that's enacting it on you. You have, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. It's the reality that we give way too much, Satan tempted me into that. No, he didn't. You know, when we're talking about the gifts and uh, you know, the charismatic kind of things, we let things that are negative come from our flesh. We're not even fighting a spiritual warfare. You, you understand what I'm saying? We're not fighting against Satan tempting us. We're allowing our flesh to make us do something. Right? You're talking about, you know, the guys in the, old, in the New Testament being, you know, awesome and these guys. Yeah, they were. They were skipping the stuff that we do. You know, I spend how much time today watching a TV show that's probably not very appropriate? How hard is it for me to stop doing that? Not very hard, but Satan makes me do it. No, Satan doesn't make you do that. You're too lazy to just say, no, that's not good for me. Right? You don't need the Holy Spirit to convict you of that. Actually, it's, it's Netflix's it fall fade. There's only 20 seconds for me to decide to watch another episode or not. It's not enough time. You know? I didn't realize that Satan is the CEO of Netflix. <laughs> wow. And I, I... He's an IT, actually. Anyway. Yeah. I... He's an IT. That's true. Satan's always an IT. Did you turn it off and turn it back on again? Um, so, I'm going down this ra road because... The whole point of this book is to come back in line with what God wants us to do. And if you're sitting there going, please, Holy Spirit, take me to where I'm supposed to go, and yet you're not just physically choosing to go where you need to go without the Holy Spirit's prompting in the first place, you can do a lot of asking without an actual lot of action. You know, uh, there's, a, there's an AA thing that somebody shared with me about, uh, you know, uh, crossing the river, I, I can't remember the entire par I'm paraphrasing it horribly, but basically the statement was was three frogs are on a log uh, a frog jumps off and he makes it across the river, the other two are sitting on the log, and one of the frogs says, I'm not going to jump, I think I can make it without having to go, and the other frog decides to uh, jump off the log and swim across as well. How many frogs are on the log? One. Two. He decided. Didn't say he did it. There's a lot of deciding that doesn't actually follow up with action. I'm going to be a better Christian and do what I'm supposed to do. Really? When are you doing that? Well, when the Holy Spirit gets here and tells me how to do that. There's an awful lot of, I want God to change me. God, please change me. Please change me. And then you just don't practically change anything. You wait on the, oh, I'm now changing something. Why? Just do it. Start doing the things. And we've talked about it with you. You're doing the things, and you're not feeling the, the prompting or the going. You know, there's a lot of action without a lot of... I gotta, there's a lot of action with a lot of, i got to wait on God for the next thing. Because I'm doing what I think I'm supposed to be doing. God, what am I, you know, right? But there's an awful lot, I think, a lot more so in the modern Christian of, I'm going to pray about this and do absolutely nothing about it. Right? You're just treading water. You're just sitting on the log saying, I've decided to jump off, but I'm not actually jumping off and doing. And that that whole Satan attacking you thing or any of the demons attacking you thing, how much is that actually happening? How much is it? Yeah, go ahead. That it's not happening. I'm not saying it's not happening. I'm saying that why waste your energy on James Luce if he's not doing what he's already should be doing. Well, I mean, yeah. But basically, my point is that uh, I uh, believe that the demonic powers are active in us. And, and oh yeah, to do I, I absolutely believe that. Uh, I'm not telling what I'm saying. I'm just a pushover. They don't really, they don't really need to be here. Right. For the easy things. Right. You know, they might stand in my way when I'm like trying really hard. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Like, but I, you know, it's like I, I'm, I'm easy. Uh, right. Hey, hey, look over here, something shiny. Like, ooh, something shiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Doug, the intern demon, is probably who's handling me right now. And if something starts going really well with me, and I'm really focused on Christ, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, oh, hey, hey, this guy's starting to try to. That's the way I see it, because they are finite. They are not omniscient. They are. They are not eternal. They are spirits that are just attacking us separately. And why the heck spend a lot of, uh, of time on somebody who's not, who, like you said, is a pushover? They're not autonomous either. Yeah, no. They they have rank and file, and they have approval. And approval actually comes from God. Well, does Satan rule over them? Eh, he's given a, yeah. yeah. It's, he, it's, he's like Starscream, but God is Megatron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If if you went ahead and went down that whole route of you know hold on I need a, I need I need a okay God is not Megatron God is Optimus Prime <laughs> that's a close that's I gotta, a, okay you got to reset yeah so I'm sorry for the geeking out right there yeah so it's, it's all good so if we go over to Job real quick we've got we got about a minute we can probably jump jump into this really fast and Kurt go ahead and read at Job one let's see. One six. One six. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him in his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the works of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made a raid on the camels and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. And he said, naked I, have, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. All right. So who killed Job's kids? God. I mean, if you think about it, they were doing fine. Satan, he gave Satan permission to do it. He even pointed out Job. Yes, but he also Satan. gave Satan a choice. He did. Absolutely. Absolutely. Satan is evil and will do evil things. I can give my kids permission to go beat up some other kid, but... If it's they still their choice. To speed them, beat them up, then they're the ones that did it. Right. So here's the thing. Job at no point even thought about Satan. He didn't even mention Satan. And if you go through the entire book of Job, not once does he say anything that happens has to do with Satan. Why is he a righteous man? Because he accounts things to the right people. He accounts God as the person who gives him everything, takes everything away from him, 
Everything that happens to Job, he gives credit to God. Why? Because God's the one that lets everything happen to us and gives us everything that we have. Um, I'm about to give God credit for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Well, Satan doesn't al- also doesn't have power to send down fire from heaven or, or kill people. Sure. He, that's not within his scope of Well, now, abilities. he has influence, but he doesn't you're saying he decided have power. What he, you're saying he, he decided he wanted the house to fall down, so he put it in a work order with God? And that's... Said, Pretty much, yeah. This is what yeah. I want this to have. I, this is what I want to have happen. This is what I want to have, you know. And God's like the cable company is like, well, that will happen sometime next Friday between the hours of eight and five. Yeah. And eight a.m. and nine p.m. We can yeah. see evidence of that in the statement that, but of all these things, don't touch Joe, is what he pointed out. And everything else that he wanted to do happened. I didn't give you permission to do that, so that can't happen. So. This study was just one of many that takes place here at Glenville. Please feel free to look through our YouTube channel and see all the other studies that we do. We have several different ministries that try to reach different uh, types of groups and demographics. And hopefully you'll find something that fits what you need and God will speak to you through those.